today's press conference. We will be doing our usual broadcast section, followed by the daily newspapers after. And just a word of warning that we are also, tomorrow night after the Tottenham game, going to preview the Sheffield United game Sunday. So that's tomorrow night we will preview the Sheffield United game Sunday and there'll be no press conference on Friday. We're going to start today with Carve at Sky Sports News. Carve, over to you. Uh, Thomas, first of all, uh, tomorrow obviously is Spurs versus Chelsea, but it's also Thomas Tuchel versus Jose Mourinho. Uh, how much of a role model was um, Jose Mourinho for your generation of coaches? And do you think the game tomorrow will be a clash of football philosophies? I'm not so sure. First of all, I strongly believe that uh, Chelsea, it's it's Tottenham, Tottenham against Chelsea and not me against Jose. I'm very happy to compete with a strong team against his side. I'm very happy to arrive with a squad uh, with our quality, with our mentality and uh, with the atmosphere that uh, we are in right now. This is the most important. Uh, was he a role model? Honestly, when I started my career, he was uh, so far away, like like the moon from the earth. Uh, he could not be a role model at all. When I I was, you know, I was happy in the academy. When I was at the academy, I was promoted to first league football, and uh, from from there on, I I, I just uh, enjoyed every day, and I, I was focused every day. So is it a um, uh, so we don't have to, we don't have to leave any doubts. He's one of the best managers in the world. He is now he created a, a squad in Tottenham that is like always very very competitive, very very strong, um, um, and uh, like I said, very competitive. And that would be that would be the challenge. Is it a clash of cultures? I don't know. I think that uh, Jose is a winner and I want to implement the same in, in, in my teams. We are on the highest level to win games and we will try everything tomorrow to, to beat them in their stadium. Um, you obviously knew a lot about Spurs uh, when you were growing up. Um, it's the club that has developed a lot in the last few years yeah. uh, with the new stadium and uh, getting to the Champions League final as well. Um, what do you think about the development of Spurs? Do you think now they're one of the biggest clubs in Europe? And, and how much was that down to Maurizio Pochettino? Yeah, for sure. He had a big, big impact uh, in the development uh, of that squad. It was, uh, it was a great experience for, for, for me personally, for me to play with Dortmund at White Hart Lane and to have the chance to, to play them in the European competition with Dortmund against, against Spurs. Uh, we managed to win both uh, bo both both um, games, which was a big achievement and a pure joy to to be there because, of course, was with spectators and uh, was an amazing atmosphere and uh, a big challenge and was was for us a big big win. Um, of course, over the years, uh, Maurizio Pochettino implemented a certain style and they had they had. Uh, big runs also in, in uh, Champions League and went far and uh, with uh, like from my point of view from outside with uh, with a new stadium they they entered a new level of uh, of, 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 of clubs and uh, they are in one of the biggest clubs and uh, in, uh, in in England and in Europe for sure and this means this is a big challenge but don't get confused when I was when I was as a boy uh, once or twice, Tottenham in the garden is, is was more it was more like uh, to to show off a little bit and uh, in in front of my friends because actually I didn't know that Tottenham Hotspur is a club in London so it was just a fancy name and it was a team that we could see on TV for some minutes and later of course with Jurgen Klinsmann playing there and some some German players there was uh, more the focus so this this was this was it there is no doubt that I arrive tomorrow in blue and uh, proud to, to coach in blue and proud to coach my team and we will do everything to, to win the game. Writing's not that easy, but Grammarly can help. This sentence is grammatically correct, but it's wordy and hard to read. 
It undermines the writer's message and the word choice is bland. Grammarly's cutting edge technology helps you craft compelling, understandable writing that makes an impact on your reader. Much better. Are you ready to give it a try? Installation is simple and free. Visit Grammarly.com today. Um, and also, obviously, you've worked with some great players in your career, some great forwards. Yeah. Um, I just wanted your thoughts on, on Harry Kane. Do, do you think he's the best number nine in the world? And how much easier... Uh, will your job be tomorrow if it looks likely he's not going to be playing? <clears throat> well, I would say it's always easier if Harry Kane is not playing. This is a given. This is for sure. And this is absolutely no secret. Um, Harry Kane is one of the best number nines in the world. And like you said, mm, when he's in shape, maybe the role model on the number nine that every coach and every team wishes for in terms of work rate, in terms of ambition, in terms of uh, mentality, attitude uh, and and uh, for sure goal scoring is uh, simply outstanding. Um, yeah, in the moment we, 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 we assume that he will not play but we will prepare uh, we will prepare us for 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 all cases. So maybe like uh, when he's on the pitch, we will also be prepared for that. Um, yeah. Last one. And just, just yeah, just a final question from me um, is about Danny Ali. Obviously, he was a, a player who was um, linked. Are you in the right press conference? Yeah. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> No, I mean, I mean, just just quickly. Obviously, he was a player who was close to moving to PSG when you were yeah. a PSG manager. Yeah. Um, are, are you are you surprised at the way he's he's not playing at the moment? I will not answer to that. I, I was happy to answer for for Harry Kane because it's a it's an honor for me to 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 speak out that he's one of the best players. But but uh, anything else to every other player, we I I hopefully you have. Um, you understand that I want to show the respect that uh, I don't talk about any other players from from other from other coaches. Um, we stick to our team. Thanks. Lindsay Hooper, Premier League. Hi, Thomas. Yeah. Um, speaking of strikers, one of your own, Timo Werner. Um, can I ask you how you deal with a player that's low in confidence, off form, and especially when it's a striker? Well, first of all. With every player, and of course with all strikers, and, and of course with with Timo, we try to create a bond and we try to create a relationship. Every person, every guy is uh, is different. Every guy needs needs something else. Some need need you to be close. Some need to be more alone. Some need to be uh, like pushed hard. Some need to be uh, need a hug, whatever. And so we find out uh, what what suits him to to feel comfortable to open up and. Um, and then to feel uh, comfortable again on the pitch is our is our responsibility to also create to create moments and situations where he can bring out his best that means to attack the space behind the back of the of the last line of defense of the opponents to use his speed and for that we we try to create uh, moments and situations with the whole team and of course with the offensive guys to to use his strengths and this is what we do with uh, what we try to do and try hard to do with every player and from there on in the end the last 10 the last 15 maybe the last 20 percent they only come back if he scores this is uh, for sure this is in my opinion with every striker in the world like this you can talk you can train they can uh, score in training what you can do whatever if uh, nothing helps as much if they they find the net in 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 in, uh, in important games uh, he has good memories uh, to the stadium of the Spurs. He scored a, a decisive goal against them for Leipzig, and uh, sometimes things like these help also to 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 find back in his, his best shape. But he's on a very good way because he's he's open and he accepts that the situation is like this. He's not looking for excuses, and he's working hard, concentrated, and uh, all that together with a smile. And this is the best. Uh, 
the best to 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 keep on going. Moose Talk Sport Radio. How are you? I'm fine. Um, double to a barrel press to start with. Are you surprised at how good the Chelsea squad is? Came in and 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 Mason Mount. I mean, for years, last couple of years, we've been saying this guy is going to be the backbone of an England team going forward. From what you've seen of Mason Mount and, and man of the match on Sunday, would you agree with that? I absolutely agree with the potential that I see and that you mentioned with Mason. What I saw from outside and what is proven now from the inside that the guy is 100% all the time, even more, that he cares a lot, a lot about Chelsea, um, that he cares about uh, his teammates and that he is leaving his heart out there on the pitch. So if you train with mason if you play with mason you can it's one thing you can very be sure of uh, absolutely is that he gives his 100 percent on this day in this minute and uh, this is the best uh, level to to grow and this is the best situation from from where to start and from where to become a, a top 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 player he has everything what is needed to to reach um, higher and higher levels I don't know where his limits are, but uh, right now we, we we will push him and support him. And um, you know, the, the, like I said, the most important is that it comes from inside of him. And and what makes every what makes me very happy is that he's a nice guy. He's a totally open guy, and uh, a very positive a very p positive aura, a very positive energy um in the dressing room and outside on the pitch and it's a, a real ple pleasure like to work with the whole team and to work uh, also with mason and maybe this is answers your first question i'm i'm not surprised but i'm absolutely delighted to see how we train how we behave and uh, what what quality is is in the squad on all positions um how flexible how flexible we can play uh, every position we have um, uh, two or three guys who can play the position on a very high level and I'm very very absolutely pleased uh, with the behavior and uh, and the atmosphere this is uh, this is right now um, the, the atmosphere that we have to to be uh, focused on and we have to be keep on going because this is uh, this is exactly how it should be to grow also as a team it's good one more please man. yeah what is my, my follow up my last one was going to be last week. I, I did some research and I found out you liked Spurs when you were a, a kid back in Germany. We talked about that. And um, I've done some more research and I found out that unlike some managers who maybe like to get a beer after a game when they win, you like to go out for a big celebratory meal. But you're a vegan as well. So, what was what your favorite celebratory meal after a game? I would say, if you ask me right this, I, I, I love the pizza. And I love the spaghetti bolognese, so no, so I forget that I'm a vegetarian. I try to be vegetarian. I'm not vegan. I I try hard to be vegetarian, and some days it's easier, and some days it does not work. Like if I have a good pasta with bolognese, I forget that I try to be vegetarian. So you can have fun with me, no doubt about it. I would prefer maybe a gin tonic if we win against Tottenham instead of a beer. I'm not the beer guy. I'm not the wine guy. And my consume of alcohol goes very, very close to zero. But uh, still, don't don't confuse it. We can we can celebrate and we can have a good time. It's no problem. There it is. Alison McGowan, BBC. Hi, Thomas. Yeah, um, hi. I just wondered um, whether you could talk a little bit about how important it is to preserve a club identity a club. when. <laughs> through the academy ah. in the sport and also does that ever influence your team? My team selection. Um, well, as we know, we are all <laughs> is, is, we are all influenced all the time by, by, by many things and it's a it's, it's a hard thing to be to to I don't know if I can say no that does not influence me or it does maybe it does. But I always try to be as objective as possible <laughs> in my point of view i'm uh, i'm doubting my decisions all the time i'm doubting and i'm asking uh, m myself and my decisions all the time if if they are reasonable if they are like if they are consequent if they are understandable also for the players in in in, uh, 
in, in terms that we can that we have a reliable relationship with everybody. I didn't understand your question very, very well, but I thought it's about the identity and the academy and the, if this is important. For me, it's yeah. a crucial point, and for me, I'm, 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 I'm absolutely pleased about the quality of the, of the academy. I, I, I had a look here from the balcony already to, to an to a in-house match. Uh, I, I could not go over because we have different zones, of course, that we have to respect, but I saw from the balcony and I, 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 I watched the in-house match of the 18-year-olds, which was on a high level. And the guys we have here, they are like, uh, it's a pleasure to work with them because they have, they have, first of all, they have the quality, but they have also the, 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 physical, the, the, um, the physical ability to, to play Premier League. I know how hard it is like to play for Chelsea and to play for Chelsea and compete for titles, but this is the challenge and I'm very, very pleased that all the Chelsea boys who are in the squad right now they are absolutely aware of and that they take this challenge that is so hard because it does something to you. It does something to your character and it does something to your approach to games and trainings. And um, yeah, for me, it's is, is, is crucial and it's very, very important that, that, uh, that we have this and, and that we rely on them and we trust them and we don't, uh, we don't confuse that they are young and inexperienced maybe with uh, that, that we need other players or that we need that they lack of quality because it's, it's absolutely not like that and they will be given any chance to, to make their steps and leave their footprints here. But in the end, we also have to accept that it's about, uh, uh, it's about quality and it's about delivering in the moment when you need to deliver and uh, there are no gifts for nobody. And can I ask one more question? Am I thinking this is the first time that you've faced Joey Jay Mourinho? And do you think that maybe some criticism of his style, maybe being a bit passive, is unfair? I think it's very clear what he stands for. He, he builds competitive teams, he builds strong teams, he has a uh, now build a, a Tottenham squad with uh, see with, with with characters like Sissoko Hoiberg and, and that support the defense. They, they are like super competitive, defensive, disciplined, hard working guys. They have up front normally with Harry Kane, Son, Bergwijn, Lamela, um, um, Bale. They have outstanding quality and speed. Um, <laughs> Who's the boss? I'm the boss. I have the biggest respect for, 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 for him because he's building teams on the highest level to, to compete and to win, to win game after game after game. And this is what he's doing at, at, at Tottenham and, and we're doing it in our style and in our beliefs and everything is allowed and there is no, there are, there are many ways to succeed and uh, uh, I think he, he was very successful to believe in himself and until today he has an outstanding career as a world-class coach and we are here to beat him tomorrow with his squad because this is the challenge we are up for and this is the we are very excited to to have matches like this in a, in, a, in within the league okay last question in this section Nick Pure. Hi right, Thomas, can I just ask um, for an injury update, if, if you've got any injuries or how your squad's looking for this match? Um, yeah. Just, uh, Rhys James, you know, suffered some horrendous abuse on social media, which is, you know, terrible, um, should, should never happen. I just wonder, have you spoken to him about that? What will you, um, I know the club have obviously do, do a great deal of things uh, fighting uh, uh, discrimination and, and, and racism. So I just wondered if you speak to Rhys about that, speak to the squad about, you know, how you will support him and the other players against things like that, which obviously just shouldn't happen. No, but the team spoke about it, and and the club spoke with the team about it, and but not me in particular. We had a lot to speak about in terms of uh, um, um, tactics and and analyzing our games. So that was enough uh, talking. I would say I have a close relationship with Reese, and there was nothing like. Uh, to worry about because he was aware he got a lot of support and he has for sure all my support. We didn't speak in particular now about this case, but um, um, you can be totally assured that I'm I'm uh, one thousand percent on his side and at his side. And uh, 
but I had the feeling that it was a good distraction also for him uh, to, to be out on the pitch and to talk about football and uh, to see the support of the club and his teammates there was and of, of course of his coach. There's uh, simply no doubt about it. And uh, 